Holy Week. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 793, Lord Whose Love in Humble Service, number 793. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Good afternoon. Jesus died that we might live. Jesus died for the sins of the world. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant us so to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's passion that we may merit to receive your pardon. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O islands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth from my mother's womb. He gave me my name. 
He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing, uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord.
affliction like a gentle lamb to the Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Reclining at table with his disciples, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified, Amen. Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another at a loss as to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. After Judas took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, what you're going to do, do quickly. Now none of those reclining at table realized why he said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, buy what you need for the feast, or to give something to the poor. So Judas took the morsel and left at once, and it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children... I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say it to you. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I'm going? You cannot follow me now, though you will follow me later. Peter said to him, Master, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What it boils down to, what it's about, is perspective. A person can completely miss the significance of Holy Week and Easter without a proper perspective. We can become so wrapped up in our daily drama that we don't have any awareness that this week, this week is so important that it has everlasting implications for our lives. Observant Jews know it's about Passover, the Exodus, the giving of the Torah, and entry into the Promised Land. And so it is with Christians. It is an eternal motif. I know some of you know this. I can occasionally, and I do from time to time, probably not ad nauseum yet, but maybe we're getting there. I occasionally make reference to the fact that we live suspended in a gravitational field on a large water-covered rock going around a star 
at 66,000 miles an hour. And around the rock we call Earth is another smaller rock, but this one with no water, which we call the moon. It orbits the Earth at over 2,000 miles an hour. We have been experiencing a full and almost full moon for the past couple of days. I hope you noticed that. You did? Okay, good. The date of Easter is calculated as the first Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox, which is the first day of spring. How many people are even vaguely aware of any of this? 66,000 miles an hour around the sun, the moon going around the earth at 2,000 miles an hour. Does anybody really notice these things? And so, now with Holy Week and Easter, it's a matter of perspective. Let's put it this way. Your mother and father, they may not have told you. No other relatives, friends, neighbors, teachers, your doctor, or even your pastor may not have told you. But here it is. This is the God honest truth. You indeed have a fatal illness. You have a fatal illness that you will not survive. No one does. No one ever has. And probably you're not even aware of it. You probably haven't even thought about it. Most people don't. They pretend it's not going to happen to them. At least, not yet. If they do think about it, they may tell themselves, oh, don't worry about it. Everything is going to be okay. There will be an easy transition to the everlasting family reunion in the sky. That's fine. But our readings for today, and in fact, the readings of all of Holy Week, beg to differ. Our first reading from the prophet Isaiah, a passage that's called the second song of the servant of the Lord, or the suffering servant. It talks about someone God has, who has sent to save people from the consequences of their sins and from the consequences of breaking their relationship with God. Now let's just think about that for a moment. Does anybody really believe these days that there are consequences for our sins? Does anybody really take seriously that there are consequences for our broken relationship with God? But the Lord fashioned this servant for this purpose, for his efforts to save the people have been ignored. He's been tortured, tortured and even threatened with death. And at this point, the suffering servant begins to believe that it was all pointless, all done in vain, all my hard work, all my suffering, all my pain for the salvation of people and has gone unnoticed, ignored. It's been in vain. But the Lord strengthens him to see that indeed the ultimate victory will be there when Israel is indeed restored to the Lord. And so it is with us. We can easily see how the song of the servant applies to Jesus in his life and particularly in his ministry. Here is a man who voluntarily takes on a human nature although divine. And I hope you realize that Jesus was not coerced. He was not forced into it. He voluntarily, the divine being, voluntarily took on a human nature and all that that means. And after all his teaching, after all his miracles, after all his love, ultimately he finds himself executed in utter shame after being tortured, his mission gone down as a failure, his enemies claiming victory, Jesus deserted by his disciples. 
all this for nothing? Apparently. It's holy. We may watch graphic movies about Jesus suffering. We may watch graphic films about Jesus' death. We may see terrible scenes of Jesus in the crucifixion. And we can feel sorry for him. We can even feel deeply that it wasn't fair. How could this have happened to him after all the good that he did? But this was the means of our salvation. Think about it. This was the very means of our escape from everlasting death. Jesus said, if you're going to be my disciple, you must pick up your cross and follow after me. Pick up your cross and follow after me. It is the path we must follow if we want to escape from this inevitable fatal illness. We can ignore it. We can pretend tell ourselves that heaven is easy. It's for nice people. All you have to do is be nice. Or we can wake up, come to our senses, and take Jesus seriously. The victory does come to Jesus. We know that he will be resurrected. But the victory comes to Jesus who indeed walked the walk. If you and I are not walking the walk, where do you suppose we'll end up? Let us stand to pray. We bring to the Lord our prayers and petitions. For Pope Francis, the vicar of Christ on earth, may God continue to bless him and sanctify him in his ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. For national leaders, may the Lord show them the path to promoting the common good for all persons, let us pray to the Lord. For all suffering with chronic illnesses, may they be upheld and strengthened through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. For the people of this faith community, both present and virtual, may God's providential love for us encourage and sustain us, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, and today I would ask you to join with me in praying for Reverend John Vitulik. He was a pastor some time ago at St. Catherine of Alexandria, and he was my first pastor as a priest. And he has passed away, and his funeral will be tomorrow. And let us also pray for Sharia and Rajmana Thota, for whom this Mass is offered. May God grant them his peace and his glorious kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, we bring to you our prayers, entrusting them to your holy and loving will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably, O Lord, we pray, on these offerings of your family, and to those you make partakers of these sacred gifts, grant a share in their fullness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we 
pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, my roof, but only 
they say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 929, Let Us Be Bread, number 929. We will sing verses 2 and 4. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you have fed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. And have a most blessed day.
Our closing hymn is number 775, The Kingdom of God, number 775. We will sing verse 3. Thank you. 